Eso aquí en Auto 060, eh, estamos llegando al final de este show de esta semana. Eh, ha sido muy interesante y muy emocionante todas las cosas que hemos hecho el top 10 list de los aut mejores autos familiares del 2013 la prueba de manejo del BMW M6 allá en Austin, Texas eh, y las experiencias aquí en Lamborghini, Miami and now we're going to switch back to English again because uh, we have Chu Hee Lee uh, Deputy Director of Volkswagen Group Electronics Research Laboratory in uh, Silicon Valley in California How are you, Chu Lee? I'm doing very well Thank you Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you for having uh, taking the time to talk to us. And, uh, and I understand uh, there was a big announcement uh, recently regarding uh, your partnership with Stanford University, right? Yes. Um, so we have been working Stanford for uh, no for quite some time, and uh, this marks our extension of the existing collaboration that the, uh, we've been uh, working on. Yeah, and it's pretty amazing how much uh, technology has uh, moved uh, in the auto industry pretty quickly, right? I, I guess in, in the past five years almost, I mean, which for the auto industry, uh, for other industries might be a long time, but for the auto industry it's pretty short time because uh, it usually takes about that time just to develop one car, and there's so much technology that has come out in cars in, in that period, five, five years. Yeah, you're yeah, right. I mean, the, the automotive industry, uh, compared to the consumer electronics, the development time and testing uh, takes uh, you know, uh, much longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, tell us a little bit about the, what the work that is done uh, at the lab, uh, the Volkswagen lab there in Silicon Valley. I know that uh, you had a project recently, a few years ago, actually, with a fully autonomous Volkswagen Touareg. Uh, so that was one of the things that you've done there. But uh, can you t share what you're doing? I, with, with our audience? Absolutely. So, so you know, the, the, the lab, we've been working on research project like this autonomous driving uh, vehicle, like the, um, the, the Touareg, uh, the semi uh, for the, um, in 2005, uh, Grand Challenge, and we also uh, worked on a, on a Passat uh, two years later for the urban, uh, you know, autonomous driving, and also, uh, you know, with the uh, Paxpeed TTS, and uh, now the TTS to go, Autonomously on top of the uh, you know uh, the pack speaking in Colorado, and we continue uh, our work on the autonomous driving. So that's one topic. And another topic is in the domain of infotainment. Uh, our lab uh, made the first prototype of the Google Earth on the uh, okay. infotainment system, and then we have that as a product. Today you go to any uh, you know Audi dealer and you can buy an Audi with Audi Connect system, which includes the uh, Google Earth navigation that where you can see gorgeous satellite images uh, in your uh, map. Yeah, that, that that's uh, replacing the, the images from uh, all the GPS system with uh, what you see in your computer, right? Or your uh, smartphone? Well, I would say it's more kind of you know, overlaying, so we still have our standard map on board, so in case that you don't have connectivity because you're in a very remote place, okay. you still have uh, like standard map. And then we extended the standard map by uh, including the Google Earth to uh, download the satellite imagery that you were familiar with your, from your desktop or your from smartphone so that it gives you a better idea of your surrounding by seeing the you know, satellite uh, photos. Yeah, uh, so you have uh, both systems there. Uh, but can we go a little bit, uh, can we go back a little bit to talk about the autonomous driving cars? I mean, uh, obviously you have proven the theory, but uh, where do you see this technology uh, being applied in the general market? I, I know we're uh, some time from that, but what do you see the challenges in that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some of the, uh, you know, let's say early uh, implementation of autonomous driving will be under certain conditions like autonomous driving mode uh, to follow a step and go traffic. Uh, you know, autonomous maybe driving, like autonomous parking would be the, uh, some of the like uh, relatively earlier uh, deployment of, you know, like partially autonomous or we call it automatic uh, uh, driving. And for the full, you know, the auto, uh, like autonomous driving, it will take a little bit longer than just, you know, the partial, uh, you know, automotive, uh, autonomous driving. Yeah. And, um that, I mean, the, as I said, the technology is already there, but uh, there's also maybe the governments, the city governments that have to put the infrastructure for this, all this to happen. Uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be also a lot of this, uh, you know, the liability and some of the uh, the, the legal uh, issues, if it really cars like fully autonomous, uh, then, you know, for example, when there's an accident, uh, that will be yeah. kind of interesting then, you know, like, you know, like, <laughs> 
who is responsible for you know certain things. So uh, we want to have the driver always be engaged, uh, in, even though the car is in autonomous mode. However, uh, it also uh, brings a very interesting question of the uh, uh, the interface that we need to uh, have in the car to engage the, uh, the the driver from the autonomous mode and, and transition to uh, let's say to the uh, the manual mode. Yeah, uh, we're talking with Cho Lee. Uh, Deputy Director of the Volkswagen Lab in Silicon Valley, where uh, all the, I, mean, I was going to say the magic, but there's there's no magic in your work. There's like hard work, right? <laughs> A lot of science yeah. behind it. Yeah. Uh, so what other uh, uh, projects are going to be involved with now that we're working, um, uh, or you extended your, your uh, partnership with the Stanford University? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at this, uh, the future uh, vehicle of, you know, we call it connected intelligent car. The car knows about the driver much more, and car knows about your driving content. So it's not that we only know about how you drive, but we want to know, like, you know, the purpose of your trip. Is your trip, uh, you know, for, um, let's say, business? I mean, you, are you running late to a very important meeting? Or this type of, you know, the, the context of the drive okay. uh, becomes quite relevant, you know, for the vehicle uh, to provide, you know, right information at the right time for you. Right, so that we want to make the car more intelligent. Your smartphone today knows a lot about you and the, and the context because it has a lot of your uh, like information, contact, and uh, and the calendar and, and and so on. And we want to make the car to be you know uh, intelligent uh, to uh, work with other intelligent systems like this, uh, uh, the smart uh, like apps and uh, you know uh, smart appliances and any other like uh, uh, like intelligence that you might find in your digital life. Yeah, it's really amazing what uh, we were just talking about because, I mean, just about what? Before the iPhone, really, like five, six years ago, you could have never imagined these kind of things in a car. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, you're also getting used to more and more of, of with, with the power of the smartphone. There's like a lot of apps that simplifies your digital life, right? There's uh, uh, things like uh, Evernote that can make it really easy for you to take the note and share, and then there's... Uh, uh, you know, social media like, you know, Facebook where you're sharing so much of your, your, your information and data and there's like, you know, Google that also knows like things that you're searching for and, 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 and making recommendations, even, you know, go to Netflix and it's trying to make a recommendation of the movie that you might like. So there's a lot of intelligence being built around our digital life and we want to have the vehicle as intelligent as possible to interact, uh, you know, with other, uh, intelligence that you're kind of, you know, interacting in your, uh, uh, life outside of the vehicle, so the car will be fully part of your, uh, you know, connected digital uh, lifestyle. Yeah, Julie. So the the we're running out of time, unfortunately. But do you have a mm -hmm. web page where our audience can follow all the work for the Volkswagen Electronics Research Lab uh, that maybe we can we can share with them? Absolutely. Yeah, our homepage is www.dwerl.com. So dwerl.com, uh, and you can find some more information about. Our uh, you know, past work and also our you know, current work in there. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time and uh, really fascinating uh, things that are going on there. Um, and uh, hopefully, we'll uh, visit you at the lab over there and maybe we can see some of those uh, magic uh, things that are happening in, in the cars. Again, I said magic and it's all the science. I'm sorry. <laughs> all the sure, science that goes into the yeah. cars. Uh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be more than happy to host you uh, here and thank you very much for uh, you know, having me in your show. Thank you very much. Shuhi Lee, Deputy Director of the Volkswagen Group Electronics Research Lab in Silicon Valley, in California. Um, y, bueno, ahí tenía la entrevista sobre todas las cosas increíbles que están pasando con los coches. Hablaba de él de cómo el auto se va a convertir en una extensión de nuestros teléfonos celulares. En realidad, antes nos conformábamos con eso nada más. Eh, con el teléfono. Eh, bueno, esto ha sido la edición de hoy de Auto 060. Gracias a DJ Cafa y en los controles. Y nos escuchamos muy pronto en la siguiente edición aquí en Cristina Radio Network. Esto es Auto 060. Yo soy Javier Moto. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.